Black Lives Matter movement began in 2013. The Black feminist movement formed over four decades ago, and the civil rights movement peaked in the 1960s. For years, Black people have been fighting for racial justice in every part of American life, from fighting housing discrimination, to challenging violence from the state, from demanding community control of school boards, to organizing for economic justice. The movement for Black lives is a consistent and crucial fight for the total liberation of Black people. In State College, Black folks have been fighting for their right to a quality education, as well as the happiness this valley promises. The activism at Penn State we see is not new. It stands on the shoulders of Black students and community members who have broken barriers, made history, and sacrificed their time to better the college experience for themselves and others. In 1947, 300 students boycotted barbershops in State College who refused to serve Black students. Today, Black students still find themselves advocating for locations to get their hair done, as most have to go to the nearest big city for a simple hairstyle. In 1964, the Student Union for Racial Equality promoted equal rights at Penn State, and in 1967, the Frederick E. Douglass Association, later known as Black Caucus, petitioned for the creation of the first African-American history course at Penn State. Their efforts were successful, creating a course called the Negro and the American Experience. In 1968, the first Black student body president turned down the first Alumni Association Award to protest Penn State's lackluster recruitment of Black and other students of color. In 1972, students' pleas culminated in the creation of the Paul Robeson Cultural Center. Seven years later, students called on Penn State to divest from South African companies to protest the abomination of apartheid. In 1995, more than 2,000 students participated in a Take a Stand rally in support of victims of ethnic intimidation. In 2001, students rallied for a mandatory course on race to promote education to help alleviate the racially hostile climate on campus. We still don't have that today. That same year, students partook in the 10-day iconic and monumental protest called The Village. We commemorate the 20-year anniversary of those efforts this April. Black students have been doing the work, and they still are. You would think that after decades of petitioning, rallying, researching, and fighting for racial justice, here that Happy Valley would be happy for everyone. Unfortunately, it is not. We must recognize the obstacles purposefully placed in the ways of progress. We must recognize the obstacles purposefully placed in the way of progress. Inequitable procedures and practices can exclude Black students from opportunities, and biased staff members who enforce policies can systematically worsen experiences for them. This happens in academic advising, residence life, financial aid, every part of student life. There are also stalling techniques. The population at a university changes every four to five years. So if they can draw out another task force or working group, make statements with no actions and keep you waiting for tomorrow, they can make you wait forever. By the time it seems like progress could be on the horizon, you have graduated and now it is on the new population to figure out the issues awaiting them. One of the biggest obstacles to seeing the inclusive community we want is the lack of commitment to anti-racist education. Yes, there is an AFAM department and opportunities for immersive study abroad experiences, but it is on the student to make that commitment towards learning. If we aren't changing the culture at the beginning of NSO, then we are allowing people who do not hold our values to commit microaggressions and threaten the well-being of minoritized students. If we aren't changing the culture at the beginning of NSO, then we are allowing people who do not hold our values to commit microaggressions and threaten the well-being of minoritized students. If our values aren't upheld at the door, then we have missed a crucial opportunity that has real implications for the most vulnerable at Penn State. Lastly, we need to think about who is doing the work. Those in power do not put it on all Penn Staters to do this anti-racist work. The responsibility is so often put on Black people to fight for Black lives. This responsibility can have such a heavy weight, effectively overburdening and tokenizing active Black faculty, staff, and students, so they are burned out. Especially Black women are tasked with being student and teacher, listener and facilitator, identifying the problem and coming up with the solution. Black feminist theory asserts that it is Black women who have been responsible for their own liberation. No one else looks out for us but us. 
When you look at organizational leadership at Penn State, it is dominated by Black women. We have continuously showed up despite being overburdened with the emotional and intellectual labor of educating and balancing the perceptions of our humanity. To be in this work day in and day out with less or no monetary or emotional compensation is a life that we should not have to live. Once we've identified the obstacles, we need to be strategic in how we advocate for progress at this higher learning institution. Something that needs to be fundamentally understood is that change must occur at multiple levels. We must commit to an anti-racist education, incorporating inclusivity within the classroom, mandating a class in AFAM or related courses and settling for no less. In campus life, mandating student club leaders, RAs and other staff to go through anti-racist training, providing extra support to black organizations and their endeavors, Publicly holding students accountable who spew hate gets us more towards a better Penn State rather than empty statements and accepting modern segregation. It is not enough to have a diverse administration. You must be anti-racist with people working for all students and not what is economically efficient for an institution. The administration should be working with the community to make Happy Valley a place where black faculty and staff would like to live have a budget that reflects anti-racist values, more scholarships and financial aid for black students, not empowering racist town businesses, but advocating for a place for black people to get their hair done, relax, eat the foods of their cultures. Lastly, we must make it known to parents of students that hate isn't tolerated here and that it is on everyone to call out racism when you hear or see it. We have made progress but not nearly enough for so many students to have pride in their college. Let solidarity be real, the goals be clear, and the war be won against white supremacy. Ashe.